Hey everybody, um, I wanted to show you guys my cover crop today. It's doing really amazingly and it's probably about a month away um, from me tearing it down and feeding it to the chickens and then composting it into the ground. So I just wanted to kind of show what's going on here. Now some of the most amazing uh, things I've seen happen on here are uh, resulting from the bugs. So you can see ladybug here. Um, there's countless ladybugs going on out here that um, I can find. Um, what what this cover crop has become is really just a bug hotel and I've seen tons of different predatory insects, wasps, mosquito eaters, the ladybugs, um, you know, different flies in here and I'm going to kind of walk through and maybe we'll see some more bugs kind of jumping out but you know it's creating a lot, there's a moth which I don't like, they, they lay eggs that have the, those green worms that eat your plants but it's a little home, and some predatory insect is living off of that moth, I'm sure. Also underneath the ground, tons of different earthworms and uh, grubs and other things. So this is, um, the barrage is blooming everywhere, and the, the bees really, really love it. You can see some of the other barrage flowers in the distance. Um, I used four different types of clover out here, and um, hopefully soon we'll get to see some of the flowers. This, so far, this is really the, the main clover that's gone into full bloom. I've seen a few others uh, with smaller flowers, but not, nothing like that. Um, over here we can see... Ah, uh, here's one of the clover flowers. Um, over here we can see that the wheat is starting to finish up. Once it dries out like this, the seed is basically um, fully formed, and it's going to go to seed. Ah, here we go. There's some mosquito eaters. There they go. Tons of predatory insects in here. So I'm gonna be feeding this to my chickens and the rest um, I'll be pulling out before it fully goes to seed. Every other day, every couple days, I come out here and I pull the weed. I just walk through this and I find weeds that are going to flower that I don't want. So like this guy, this is a really common weed here in San Diego. I pull them all out and then I just throw it in the chicken pen. They eat it, if whatever they don't eat gets composted. So yeah. Very, very happy with this cover crop. Um, I first did a sheet mulch and then I cover cropped the top of that. The cardboard underneath is is basically all gone. I'll try and dig under here. And yeah, like here it's just gone. I, don't, I can't even find any cardboard. It just goes straight down to the soil. So this, this land out here is going to be really nice once I um, till it and and get the beds prepped. Okay, so time to prep the land. One of the main reasons um, that I'm doing this is because as you can see, there's a lot of dead grass here. Once the winter comes and the rains come, all this grass is gonna start sprouting again and becoming green. I don't want that to happen. So one of the other reasons for cover cropping besides nitrogen fixing and nutrient accumulation um, is to stop weed growth or plants that you just don't want growing there. We, you know, we'd rather choose our own variety of plants rather than um, just have grass or you know, goat heads or tumbleweeds or some other awful thing that doesn't really um, benefit what we're doing. All right, so I'm gonna use, on this dried grass, I was just using a rake and a hula hose seemed to work the best. I wish I had a walking hoe, that would be awesome. But I'm gonna do this real quick. So what I'm doing right now is exposing the soil. Um, if I just threw seeds on top of this dried grass, hardly any of it would probably sprout. Um, because I want to get all the seeds touched on the ground. I'm gonna come in, in later with, you know, a very thin layer of soil to cover up the plants. So I just want to start by just unlocking the ground so they have access. Had a really awesome day today. Um, I found the jackpot. One of my favorite things about building things or um, gardening is like trying to find deals and cheaper ways of doing things. And just down my street, I have found free cardboard, an incredible amount. And the business owner says that um, he gets it every week. So um, I'm gonna be able to use this uh, for mulch, for lasagna beds. Um, it's awesome. It's gonna save me a lot of money and add a lot of great organic material. 
So yesterday, um, I did not have the cardboard and I wasn't planning on having it, but um, <clears throat> so now I'm gonna readjust what I was doing. So I've got too much straw out here now. So um, I'm gonna move some of it out of the way uh, and then I'll lay down an entire layer of cardboard. I'm gonna cover that with some straw and cover that with my compost and then I can plant the cover crop. I cannot believe I got all this cardboard. Too cool. It goes from here all the way to here in one piece. Some of them don't even have tape on them so they can be used right away. The other ones just have like a cellophane tape so it's really easy to tear them off. This is the best find ever. All right, got the first layer done. I've got half more to go. Um, I just wanted to show you how deep I'm going. I'm trying to spread it out about it an inch to an inch and a half worth of soil. So it's going about, you know, up to there on my finger. And that'll give me enough uh, in order to, you know, broadcast the seed and, it, and then I'll be able to like rake over and fold over the dirt to cover the clover seed. Um, clover seed only needs a quarter inch of coverage in order to sprout. I have some other wildflowers in there too that probably need a little bit more coverage, um, but you know, a quarter inch, most things will sprout. So I'm gonna lay out the next layer of cardboard here, put straw on top, then do my next layer of soil. And then tomorrow I'll be able to plant the cover crop and water it in. It's, uh, what is it, October 7th today, and it's getting up to about 89 degrees. Clover needs you know, at least 75 degree temperatures during the day in order to sprout. So we're still good. Uh, the temperatures for the week looks good. We're going to have no problem sprouting. This is uh, getting going before the winter comes. So exciting. So this is where I'm going to be doing my uh, my custom seed mix. So I, um, I buy most of my seeds from Peaceful Valley Organic. Um, they have just a really amazing seed selection, super high quality. Um, you can even get bare root trees from them, garlic, you know, different rhizomes, lots of different stuff. Um, <clears throat> but in my seed mix, um, the main component is going to be clover. Uh, now clover is a nitrogen fixing plant. Um, that has really nice flowers um, in the spring and, and summer and they attract lots of insects, um, ladybugs, and lacewings, and bees. So, but the main reason I'm using this is for nitrogen fixing. Um, I've got brand new land here um, and I need to get it started. You know, it's, it's been unused land for who knows how long. I don't know what's in the soil. Um, so I want to uh, get some nitrogen fixed in the soil soil, get some life going, get some soil bacteria started, um, so that in the spring I'll be able to have a much, much better garden. So just to show you, I've gotten four varieties of clover because I'd like to try them. They're all different colors, um, they have a few different types of properties. So I got the Haikon Rose, um, some sweet yellow, double cut red, and Bursim clover. Um, now you'll need to look it up in your area, you know, what, which 
clover will work best for your climate. Um, but they can pretty much grow in all temperate climates. Um, to this mix, I'm also going to be adding some other flowers. Um, I'm going to be doing yarrow. Yarrow is a biodynamic accumulator, which means um, it sends roots very deep down into the ground and draws nutrients up through the soil to the top. Um, these are excellent flowers. They draw on bees. This is a really great flower, a barrage store flower. It's related to comfrey, that it has the um, accumulator um, attribute. But it has very pretty flowers. It's medicinal. You can um, attract a tons of bees with this. They really like it. So we're going to try that out. Also going to try some lupin. These also have large seeds, so with my seed planting method, they may not sprout, but I'm just going to go for it. I uh, also have some alyssum, and this is a great plant to bring in ladybugs. Ladybugs love this flower. Um, and this is like a mix, so it'll have pink, purple, white. Um, I really recommend like the most amount of color and, and diversity you have in your garden or your farm, the better. The more beneficials that will come in, the more diverse soil life that will come to your land, uh, the more diversity that you have. So I'm just going to mix these up. I'm going to throw all these into my, just a Ziploc. I'm going to dump all these in. Um, these are each two pound bags, so I'm going to take you know, approximately one pound out of each and add it to this. Uh -huh. I'm going to mix the seeds up. And I already pre-mixed them off camera, but you might be able to see some of those other larger seeds in there. And it got mixed pretty well. I can see all the different seeds on, on uh, the top and the bottom and the sides. Yeah, push the gas, get a motherfucking nose with you. She ain't never met a young and know her like me. She got a man, but she said she really like me. She doing things to excite me. She sent me to the French town, so I know I'm trying. Somebody's horse going, so I can come next. I hit my dog up, got the back of her neck. I took a couple bands, I just want to go. Man, I just want to go fast. Gold on my teeth and on my neck. All right, after a few days, um, the clover has started to sprout really nicely. I'm <clears throat> super happy with the results so far. Um, there's going to be some hot temperatures coming up next week, so I really got to make sure to keep this extra moist to keep these babies alive. Um, but I'm pretty excited to see uh, how it'll fill in and, uh, and how many wildflowers that I uh, seeds uh, sprouted as well. Can't wait to see what uh, comes up. So it's been about a year since I did the cover crop here. And now my farm is fully developed and, and going. And I have to say that the cover crop was incredible. It, it worked so well, I, I can't even believe it. Um, I think it was the combination of the sheet mulch, the straw, and uh, you know, I did put out that layer of inch of really nice compost and my cover crop. So what, you know, what that did was just create great, great soil. Of course, I'm still building. You know, it's going to take me a few years before this stuff is just, you know, 12 inches deep, super loamy, unbelievable. So I've only spent $500 on soil. When I, you know, started this property, I was seven yards of compost and two yards of perlite. So that's like a potting mix. And that's what I use to sprout all the cover crop seeds. And that's all I've bought. I haven't bought any more soil since that uh, because I've been making my own with the chickens. And then of course all of my worm castings, worm teas and comfrey teas, that's how I'm getting my fertility. I can highly recommend a cover crop. It actually does work. Uh, after the cover crop, I even I planted in most of these beds, I, I planted provider bush beans, which is my favorite type of uh, green bean. And that was another nitrogen fixture. So you know, I loaded this soil up with a lot of different plants to help it. And I wanted to mention one more thing about the cover crop um, is, is why did I use wheat? Why was wheat growing here? And it was kind of a mistake or an accident, I would say, but it turned out I really did need that wheat in there. You're, when you do a cover crop, you always want to have a grass in there. A lot of people like to use rye. Um, I think people use barley as well. 
And <clears throat> what grasses do is they put a ton of root development down into the ground. Um, and what happens is when those plants die, they, you know, they put an enormous amount of root structure into the ground, pretty deep. And when you kill the plant, all that root structure underneath the ground dies. It's a bunch of carbon. Um, it, it decomposes under the ground and just feeds the soil life down there. Uh, so it was really beneficial to have that wheat out there in combination. You want to have a combination of grass, nitrogen fixtures, uh, nutrient accumulators, you know, flowers, all sorts of good stuff. So yeah, after that $500 worth of soil, um, I basically have been self-sustained here other than what I need to start seeds. So I'm working on a solution for that as well. But um, anyways guys, cover cropping and sheet mulching is the real deal. I can say from direct experience, highly recommend doing it even if it's just in a really small area uh, because you can use the sheet mulch to squash your weeds and then add nutrients. Alright everybody, I hope you guys learned a couple things about sheet mulch and cover cropping. You know, be sure to do some more of your own research. This is just kind of a little display about how I... So yeah guys, I'm working hard on editing my videos. You know, I've, you know, I've got to run this farm. I've got to, you know, go to the farmer's market. I've got other side business I do. So I'm trying to find more and more time to edit my videos because I love editing and putting together these videos. I have so much footage to show you guys of how I did all these systems and everything. Um, and then, I, you know, I constantly make new videos as well. I just need to edit them. So yeah, stay tuned guys. I'm going to tr be trying to put out a video every week or two weeks from now on. So yeah, if you guys have any questions about the cover crop or sheet mulch or anything that I did, I know, um, you know, these were videos I shot over a year ago and I was just starting to shoot videos and I, you know, I didn't have tons of concepts of how to make them or what to say or, so um, if I left anything out that you guys are curious about, please ask in the comments and I'll definitely answer whatever questions you guys have about it. So yeah, have a great day guys. Happy gardening and farming and I'll see you guys in the next video and please don't forget to subscribe. All right. See you in another week or two.